welcome to episode 11 of my podcast. This is um, my fortnightly vlog about knitting, crochet, yarn dyeing, spinning, anything else that seems like a good idea at the time. I'm coming to you from rural North Yorkshire in the north of England where I live with my husband, three daughters and three cats. You can find me on social media. Um, on Instagram I am Mel Brown Crafting Podcast um, and on Ravelry I'm Funky 40 and we have a Ravelry group for this podcast um, called Mel Brown Crafting Podcast. That's where the show notes are. So anything that I talk about today I will put um, a thread on the Ravelry group with all of the links to everything and then there's a link down below here to that thread so you should be able to find everything that I've talked about there. So hello lovely to see you. Um, today we have where are they now? We have new whips on the block we've got something new and uh, we had a road trip so a bit of information about that. So let's get started. Where are they now? So what happened to the projects that you saw last time? So I had a whip count of four last time. I had the two blankets, the knitted and the crochet blankets, which were long-term ongoing projects. I haven't made any progress on either of those, so I won't show you those. Then I had um, Rockin' Rose, a Martina, Martina Bame pattern that I had just started. So that's here. This is in that really nice basic easy to use yarn nothing fancy and I was up down up to here I think when I last spoke to you well now I'm up to here hmm, if I can pick it up I can't quite see the shape because the um, cable isn't long enough but there it is I think the colors are working out really nicely um, I have made a few modifications, well, one really. Um, I I can't, it's a paid for pattern, um, so I'm not going to give away too much, but there's an increase. Um, and let me see if I can show you it. Um, it. Down here, I did the increase as per the pattern. It's really, really difficult to do for a thrower, a right hand yarn. It was very difficult increase to actually do. And then it was a beast to knit afterwards and I just didn't like it. So I created a new um, increase. I just did a yarn over and it makes this double hole. So before there was kind of a single hole and now there's a double hole. So it's not as design, but I really like it. Um, will the eagle eyes eyed among you have noticed a mistake? Sorry, a feature. Um, so, have a look here in the blue section. Nice double holes and oh, one great big one through the middle. This is, as I say, a feature. Um, I like to joke that when you've made something and it's perfect and people say, where did you get that from? And you say, I made it. So, no, you can't have done. Well, I say, yeah, I did look. See, there's the mistake I made. Um, but joking aside, I thought that's quite an interesting question. We've been talking about that today, uh, this week, um, in the courses I've been teaching. If you make a mistake, do you frog it or fudge it? Um, by that I mean, do you take it back and do it right? Or do you just blag your way through and get on with it? I think it's a really interesting question because I think there are probably people who would always just take it back and get it sorted. And there are probably people who would always just blag it. But well, probably most of us, it depends on um, how bad it looks, how much effort it will take to um, unknit it or uncrochet it. Obviously, uncrocheting is pretty quick. You just rip, 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 rip. Um, and getting it back on the needles, if you do rip it out, um, getting it back on the needles is quite a pain. But it's interesting. I noticed that I'd made this um, feature and I didn't go back. And yet, up here, just last night, I'd done a, an increase rather than a decrease and my, so my stitch count was off and of course I had a hole where I shouldn't have had 
and it took two and a half rows of tinking and by tinking I mean taking it back one stitch at a time rather than just ripping it off the needles and I don't know if I'd have actually known at the time that it was going to take two and a half rows I might not have done it but I did it um, and sorry um, I'm glad I did because it was a big problem in this it's just a slightly bigger hole would you notice it not if you weren't looking for it and certainly not when it's being worn um, but that would have noticed and I would have got annoyed by it so is that the is that the criteria whether I would be annoyed by it um, or is it yeah that probably adds to the decision making doesn't it how, how much effort it take it took to knit it or and how much it will take to re-knit it how much effort it will take to tink it back or rip it out and um, how annoying <laughs> the actual and obvious the actual mistake is if I've just got too many stitches or too few then I'll just make one or you know knit front and back or knit two together so but it was more than that so interesting I find it interesting anyway so um, since I when I started this I wasn't really sure who it was for but um, I've since decided that it's for mum-in-law because these are quite very much her colours quite muted um, and um, they'll go with lots of things and crucially the yarn is acrylic and she can't wear any wool and most of the yarns I have certainly almost all the four plies I have pretty much all the four ply yarn I have has a wool content a heavy wool content so although I can make her a pair of socks with those I have done that last year can't make any shawls or anything for her with that stuff so this is going to be for her her birthday is later this month and I might have it done in time for that or I might just make it my first Christmas present um, I'll decide based on how far I get with it so um, the pattern itself is brilliant as you'd expect um, it's really well written um, and it's just elegant you know the way the effect is achieved is really elegant um, and it's just I don't look at the pattern I'm just knitting away on it I know exactly where I am it's beautiful so I can't yeah I, I can definitely recommend this pattern it's great fun um, I've run in a lot of the ends but I've got a few more to do I don't like to get behind with running in the ends not least of which because it doesn't look so nice um, but also I don't like having that at the end having you know dozens of yarn, uh, ends to run in I don't like that so there we are there's the back the wrong side I know a lot of people don't mind that in fact quite like that from a distance I quite like that as well the way with the garter stitch and you change colors so there's another there's a kind of little line of it actually on the camera I like that more than I do in person how funny so that's rocking rose by Martina Bain probably using a four millimeter needle with that I would think um, which is a US 2 or did I make that up I did completely make that up look at that a four millimeter needle is a US 6 hmm US 2 is a 2.75, that's what I always use in my socks. Right, so that is my Rockin' Rose. Um, that's doing really well. Um, so what else what did I already have on? I had a Wisteria Trellis. Um, let's get rid of that. So that's in my Mad as a Hatter bag. It jingles like it's got money in it, but it's just buttons. Um, I don't know when that became my Mad as a Hatter bag. It was my Four C's project when I was making it. Anyway, so this is a pattern by um, Joanne Scrace. Is that right? I'll put it up here. So it's in the um, Shawl Project Book 3. Um, so I had done one colour because I dyed five mini skeins at great... Um, Oh, is it personal expense a great great expense of time um, and they were more or less as I wanted them to be but the second one wasn't wound into a ball it was still on the skein so I couldn't start the second one when I last spoke to you so the idea is you do the outer I haven't brought the book down I'll put a picture in here of what the it'll the finished product should look like so 
So this is the outer edge. I had done this when I last saw you. I think I've come into this, did I say, no, I've come into the other room because I'm recording in the mornings now and the light in the front room in the mornings is not very good. And last week I was showing you things. When I was editing, I was thinking, mm, that colour is not right. So I'm hoping that with a bit more natural daylight in here, the colours will be better. So that's got quite a lot of red in it. So that's as far as I got when I spoke to you last. I've done another whole repeat with the next colour. And then I'm... Can you hear my cat? The loud one. You don't get to, I don't think you've seen her before. Meow. Come on then. Sorry. She's very loud. I've done two of the eight repeats with this third colour. So I'm almost halfway through this border. Um, so it is slow progress, not because it's not a good pattern or because it's... Um, come on, come up here. Because it's not fun. But because it's just... Um, I've got a three, three and a half millimetre hook and it's four ply so it's quite lacy and open and the yarn's a bit splitty as well um, so it's it's not particularly easy to work with and to know where to stick the hook so it's fairly slow progress but it's good I'm enjoying it and I know that the um, the main body of the shawl is going to be quite a different um, bit it's gonna be quite fun so that's that um that's my where are they now so i had four whips last week next i have cost on some new things this week kind of knew that it was coming uh that i'd have a, a massive whip fest hmm. cast on fest i don't know but it turned out to be a hook fest instead i've been saying for ages that i want more crochet projects in my life and oh my goodness did i sort that out Okay, let's start with one that I started and finished. So you'll have heard me mention Doll Belly, who's one of my best mates, and um, she has a podcast as well, Doll Belly Knits, and she has just started writing up, just a bit like, um, a bit like I have really, writing up some of her patterns, some of the things that she makes. Um, here we go. Um, just for free downloads, just to show you what she's doing. Hello. It was and super hello. <laughs> there she is. I've made her a hottie. She's because it's so sunny out there. She's decided that finally the world is living up to her expectations. She can go out and laze around in the sun anytime she wants. So it's much harder to keep her in one place. Um, I've put a hot water bottle down here for her. I'll show you her, her, her you in a minute when she snuggled up. So I'm sorry. Doll Belly Knits has done a cute little bag that she's, she makes these for her children. So they take them into school with um, some sweets, what we would call, she calls candy, but we would call sweets probably, oh, you know, some sweets, some chocolate, something like that. Um, and maybe uh, a little note. So uh, it's really, really quick and easy crochet. Um, I used whatever cotton I had kicking about. And you just kind of tighten it up and off it goes to school. So I'll put a link to the pattern in there. Really quick and easy. And uh, lots of different uses. Sweetie bag, that's called. So that was started and finished in probably the same day. Don't know. Right, more crochet. You know I did that 10 stitch blanket, which is a knitted project. Um, excuse me, I'm going to have a drink. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it's a knitted blanket can you go round and round in the square excuse me it's just so hot here at the moment drinking so much water well I frogged it and I'd um I was using it uh to use up my scrap chunky so I'd made uh magic knots and it was all together in one great big long thing so I'd made a ball for it I showed it to you when I frogged the 10 stitch so that's been sat there waiting for me to find something to do with it and I did I've wanted to do this for a while and I was you know I've started teaching again I haven't been teaching knitting and crochet for a couple of years but I decided as part of my move away from my current um, sort of bookkeeping career to knitting and crochet uh, full-time stuff 
that I was going to start teaching again. So we've got a lo lovely local yarn shop called Yarn Etc. And I did a course there on Saturday on stash busting. And one of the things I wanted to include, because there's a lot of people talking about corner to corner blankets at the moment, um, corner to corner projects. I wanted to know what all the fuss was about and I wanted to recommend one for this stash busting course. But, you know, can't really recommend something unless you've done it yourself, right? So I decided to give it a go. So I just started one off with this scrap board. Didn't really think too much about, to be honest, I did what I usually do, which was I grabbed whatever hook was roughly close to what I thought, whatever one came into my hand first. And this one's a 5.5 millimeter hook, um, which is, oh no, it doesn't say the, um, the US ones have got letters, haven't they? I wonder if it says it on it. No, it doesn't. Sorry about that. I didn't know the letter. I'll put it up here. Um, so I just grabbed the hook that came to hand and just started because I didn't, you know, it was just to cast on so I could, knew I understood the pattern so I could show it to the people on the course. Well, to say this is addictive would be an understatement. It should come with a health warning. So I started here and basically if you haven't done a corner to corner, which I hadn't, you start at one corner and you increase at both ends all the time. But it's, it's the design is really, really cool because can you see here? Sorry if you've already, you already know this, it's obvious to you. You see the stitches go that way and then they go that way. So if you've knitted entrelac, it's a kind of similar concept to that, but there's none of this faff of picking up stitches and whatever. So it's a really lovely looking thing. And the edges are quite sharp. You know, sometimes the edges are a bit woolly. The edges are really lovely and straight. So basically, I just continued working. In the first 24 hours of having this blanket, I had burned through all of the yarn that I had used in my 10 stitch blanket, and I'd been making that for weeks. Um, and bearing in mind, during that 24 hours, I also taught two courses. So it was not as if I was sat around crocheting all the time. So here it is. It has rather amazingly come into quite regular um, stripes. So it's now from my fingertips to my other shoulder. And although the pattern that I'm using, which I'll link to, doesn't actually talk about how to carry it on uh, making it into a rectangle, it's fairly simple. You just follow the instructions for the decrease part on one side and carry on your inst your instructions for the increase part on the other so you it's fairly simple so really you know i was talking about the uh, last time about the two main skills of crochet for my, to my mind which are holding the yarn and making sure it's tensioned right at the beginning and once you've got that it's working out where to stick your hook well this one this project is amazing for that last thing because you do almost every single stitch on the blanket into this the chain three space here. So working out where to stick it is really easy. You just stick it in there. So you do a little increase and then you do a slip stitch in there and then you do three chains and then you do three uh, UK trebles, US doubles. And then you do the same over here and you work your way across. Do you know, you could probably do it if you didn't have, if you were partially sighted because the vast majority of it, you can just feel your way along. I was doing it in poor light. Normally I'd have a bright light on. I was doing it in poor light because you can just do it by feel. So actually, you know what, if you know anybody who is losing their sight but is still um, a crafter, this is a brilliant project. Absolutely loving it. And in fact, I'm kind of rationing myself because once I pick it up, I don't put it down. Um, so yeah, have I told you I love this? There it is, it's beautiful. So I'm, I've pretty much gone through, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go through the rest of my chunky um, oddments, scraps, and then I'm gonna switch to uh, double knit held twice. So I've still got some double knit scraps. Don't, hmm, not sure about that because, you know the um, Garden Flowers uh, crochet blanket that I'm making? That is my double knit scraps project. I've made 30 flowers and I'm joining them, but I still haven't quite got a feel for whether 30 flowers joined is going to be enough. So I've kept all the leftovers from that in a bag. They're still there. And that's all my DK scraps. And I'm a bit reluctant to use them up in this if I'm then going to finish the 
what I've got of the garden flowers and say, oh, I need another 10 flowers or something. Hmm. So I'll probably worry about that when I get to it. I'll just use up the chunky first and then decide what to do based on the size of it and everything. Um, so that's that. Okay, oh, the yarn I'm just, I'm just using any old. Some of it's really nice and soft. Some of it is not. Some of it is quite squeaky. Um, don't know where I get these weird things from. Right. Okay. So on Saturday, I taught two courses at Yarn Etc. in Harrogate. I taught um, the stash busting course and I taught Tunisian crochet. Now I, episode, um, I talked about Tunisian crochet um, and I showed you my samples I was making for the course. And we did the course and it was brilliant. We had five lovely ladies on it really enjoyed it um, and we worked through lots of different techniques and then we had a little sampler well one of them was so Christine she was lovely she was so excited by it she wanted to do a, um, a second course a kind of improvers Tunisian crochet course well that means I need to improve doesn't it so I decided to start a Tunisian crochet project um, and where is it that's not it that must be it Right, so I had a uh, ball of yarn in my stash I've had for quite a while, as is usually the case with me. So it's Warcraft Cakes. Now it's, um, it looks a bit like those um, lovely um, scape, I can't remember, scapius, I don't know, I keep getting that wrong. Um, uh, ones or the what else is there Karen cakes ones it's the same concept but it's very much um, a cheaper version because it's not it doesn't slowly morph slowly fade from one to the other they just it's just um gradient dyed chunks so uh, well it was only six pound 99 so I really can't complain and it is 80% um, acrylic and 20% wool so it's quite pretty um, so, I started a Tunisian wingspan. Wingspans are a pattern that I saw ooh, four years ago at the Knitting and Stitching Show. It was everywhere, pinned up on the wall. And they're beautiful with a skein of sock yarn, absolutely beautiful. So I made one. It wasn't particularly easy to wear, um, to be honest, um, but it was beautiful to look at. Um, but this is a Tunisian crochet version of it. Pattern is by... Um, so what it suggests is that you do, there are triangles. Let me show you a picture of the, um, of the original pattern, uh, initiated pattern here. So there are triangles of different, um, sizes. And so what I decided to do, I did the first triangle in Tunisian reverse stitch. Oh, that looks like a hole. No, it's not. In Tunisian reverse stitch and quite annoyingly the colour started with this purple and then changed to that and from then on it's carried on with that it changes just after the wedge finishes which is really annoying if I'd have known that I'd have just taken out that first bit but never mind so this is Tunisian reverse stitch and then the second wedge or triangle I did Tunisian honeycomb and then the third one which is darker so you're not going to be able to see it as well Oh, actually, look at that. Tunisian crossed stitch. You can see the crosses really well where it changes colour. So that's the end of the third wedge. And I'll just carry on round until I run out of yarn, basically. So you can see where it's going. And it carries on round and, yeah. I don't know how wearable it's going to be. Um, but to be honest, it isn't really for wearing. It's for... Um, taking to a class and demonstrating the different stitches and um, what I plan to do is to run a course where we actually work through this pattern so it's kind of um, a sample really so everybody there will get a ball of yarn and a hook here's my seven millimeter hook so that's something to be aware of if you're going to give um, opportunity in crochet a go this is um, Aaron Waite, uh, hmm. it, they suggest a five millimetre hook, 
and this is a seven. So you want to go up by about that much. Um, otherwise it's, the fabric is so dense and it's difficult to work with. So um, in a class, everybody will get their own ball and their own hook and they'll just make one of these. Um, and I think doing it with different stitches for each wedge is really, really good because you don't get bored of the same stitch. Um, so that's that. It's three wedges into, I don't know, probably seven, something like that. So it's really, really, really enjoyable. Um, just having a look at the back. The back's quite interesting too. The back of the um, reverse stitch looks like garter stitch, doesn't it? Knitted garter stitch. Mm, maybe not. And that, the back of that one looks like a bit like moss stitch. So I think it's going to be one of those things where front or back are, uh, you know, both interesting. Anyway, so that is, it's not really for me, it's really for classes. Um, but it's great. Right, what's that? What's that? Okay, so um, where are we at? Uh, another new project. Oh, yeah. Um, I bought some books. I'm going to show you them in a minute. And something new. But I decided I wanted to give Tunisian Crochet in the Round a go. So I bought something new. Oh, you're going to like this. This is Stan. Here is Stan. He's a big fella. And look, he's got a hook on the other end too. It's a double-ended Tunisian crochet hook. Six millimeter, because I want to work with double knit, which is you'd normally use four millimeter for. So, um, this is another thing from yarn etc so I watched a video I'll put a link in the show notes um, a lovely lady talking you through making a hat now the concept with a Tunisian crochet is that you crochet across picking up lots and lots of stitches and then you come back taking them off so at the end of your forward pass you have 20 40 60 stitches at the end of your reverse pass you have one so um, crocheting in the round what you do is you connect them round as you would normally do and then you crochet as many as you can along here and then you turn the whole thing round and you do your reverse pass but not reverse with this end so you're basically following you've got a chaser You've got one yarn doing the first forward pass, and you've got your second yarn doing the reverse pass, following up behind. That doesn't make any sense to you. Don't worry. If you're interested in Tunisian crochet, there's a playlist on my channel that I put together for people who attended classes. So have a look at that. It's really fun. So I started this last night, bought the hook um, and started it immediately. This is just random double knit from my stash. I really don't know where it came from. So, hmm. I don't see much colour there, let's have a look at that, is that better? It's really interesting texture, it looks like it's woven doesn't it? It looks like you've just woven the coloured yarn in, in the, with the, um, behind the stitches of the dark. So, what I've done is I've just done Tunisian simple stitch there and the second yarn is a different colour because you've got to have a second yarn anyway so you might as well have a second colour and make it more interesting. It is too small for me but again it's going to be something that I use for classes so I'm not too bothered by it. Um, I did try a different stitch in the middle um, but the it was all at the front so the, the second yarn, the, the colourful yarn was at the back so you couldn't see it so I'd, I'd abandoned ship there so I will carry on with that it's really fun to do the the Stan is a funny fella you have to get used to him he's quite big um, but that's good fun I, I'm really enjoying that and um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep working on those um, former classes so that gives me a whip count I've got the two blankets that I had before I've got the wisteria uh, trellis and the rocking rose that I had before and I've got three new projects all of which are crochet two of which are Tunisian so it takes me to seven whip count of seven 
and um, two of those are knitted, two of those are Tunisian crochet and three are standard crochet. So five sevenths are crochet. This is what's been coming for a while because you know I've been saying for a while I need more crochet in my life. I've done it. So, um, oh, something I was thinking about last night. I was so excited when I got back from the course on Tuesday night, the um, freeform crochet course. I taught it seven till now, we finished that off. That was fun as well. I'll put some pickies in here of, um, of what people made. Um, so I got back about half past nine and my crochet book had come. I'll show you that in a minute. And I was so excited. So I was in bed late already. No, I stayed up to watch the football. I didn't come straight to bed. I watched the penalty shootout from the football. Um, for those of you in the US or not in the UK, we have we were in the World Cup. We um, got to the I don't know knockout stages or something. So the penalty shootout, and then England won. So I stayed up to watch that. So I was already late to bed, and then I started reading my crochet book, and I got really, really, really excited. And I didn't sleep very well. And that's something that really made me think. Crafting is meant to relax you and make you calm. And I think knitting does. When I'm knitting, I am calm. I can almost feel the endorphins being released as I'm just sat there calmly knitting. But crochet makes me excited. And I, I knew that. I've known that for a while because I banned myself from doing any crochet after a certain time at night because I just get too excited by it, stimulated by it. And then I just can't seem to get to sleep and switch off. So knitting relaxes me and crochet excites me. It's funny, isn't it? What about you? Are you the same or does all craft relax you? Strange. Okay, so that's new whips on the block and whip count. Um, what else have I got? Ooh, something new. So we had a road trip. I organized a road trip with my knit group this week. And um, last week we went to two places we went to um, the threshing barn first so I'll put a link to their website but this is um, a workshop basically uh, a unit in a beautiful town called Reith in the Yorkshire Dales uh, Swaledale and um, you can't just turn up you need to um, let her know you're coming but she does amazing things. I'm going to put some pictures in here of some of the stuff that photos I took while I was there. So we met a lovely lady called Janet who runs it and um, she is just amazing. She has a wonderful story of uh, business she, she started. She had a massive business going in Hong Kong and then up and came home and started a new one she's just amazing um but basically they sell an awful lot of fiber lots of different types of fiber there and um it's just stunning so we had a lovely time we had cake and coffee and a chat and then we had a poke around in the studio it was brilliant so um any of those who watched before will know i'm a beginner spinner um and i'm really just starting i've got a drop spindle or three um, and I'm just starting out on my journey. So I was really interested to look at the fiber and oh my goodness, I got some. Not much though, don't panic. So the first I got is this, it's blended merino. Lovely colors. There, there's the colors up here, beautiful. It's really, really soft. I had a yarn hat last time and I've got a fibre beard this time. Oh, that's nice. I just want to scrunch it and it's absolutely gorgeous. I haven't bought much fibre so I didn't really know what the costs were but this one was £5 and it's 100 grams. So I thought that was really good. Beautiful colours. I don't know how I'll go about mm, spinning that as yet. Oh, it's beautiful though. I'll just keep it in my stash for a few months. Look, my nails are gone too there. Uh, in my stash for um, a few months and just enjoy smooching it against my skin. Um, so that one is lovely. But then I bought this one, which is even lovelier. It is merino and silk. Oh, lovely. 
so it feels amazing and it's got yeah it's purples and greys and some whites oh it's beautiful and that's another 100 grams so these two i i really do need to stop buying fiber now and start spinning it because there isn't a part of my week when i regularly spin i was spinning at knit group on wednesday afternoon but i haven't done that for a little while so i definitely need to yeah i need to put a section of my week so like wednesday afternoon knit group or saturday morning or something like that i need to make a time to do some spinning because i love it and i really really want to i'm still re-spinning that first bat that i spun um, and I've got so much more to go at now. So those were beautiful. Thank you very much, Janet, for a lovely visit. It really was fun. So after that, we went to Leyburn, which is another lovely town, and we went to the Wensleydale Longwall shop. So they do um, all Wensleydale. Uh, that's their, their yarn. And they have knitted objects with it. They have the most amazing range of colours in double knit, four ply, Aran. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and some fibre as well. So strangely enough, having gone to Laban, which is an hour and a quarter drive, I bought Knitting Goddess yarn, which is dyed in Harrogate, <laughs> which is a 15 minute drive from me. So don't know quite how that happened, but it just sang to me. Look at it. So it's your standard 75% um, superwash wool, 25% nylon. The wool is 45% BFL, 30% mixed British wool. Sourced from UK flocks and processed in the UK. Custom spun for us in Yorkshire. So as a Yorkshire person, this is, this is pretty much bang on. Um, it's lizard, it's the colourway. And I don't know, I'm not normally a green person but it's too beautiful. So I got that from Wensleydale, Long Wall Shop. Hello Kath, who was very kind to us there. So, lots of new things, but also Dole Belly went to Shetland um, and she bought me a Prezi. So, this is really funny because she's gone all the way to Scotland and look, who made it? West well, Yorkshire Spinners just proves that Yorkshire does appear to be the capital of the world <laughs> and I'll get some flack for that one so it's Shetland Tweed um, it is it's five millimeters so that'll be an Aran won't it um, can't say see it anywhere so uh, Maryfield 761 is that the colorway I don't know but it's 100 grams it's 166 meters yeah, yeah, it is Aaron. Go, I can read it now. So there it is. And it's just, it's kind of cream with greys and it's got these little purple and pink flecks. Lovely. I've got no idea what I'm going to do with that. But Doll Belly's got a similar skein, a different colourway, so we'll probably make something together. So, lots of lovely new things. And then the books. So I ordered a couple of Tunisian crochet books as soon as I realised that I was going to be, I was going to become the Tunisian crochet queen. Well, that's my plan anyway. One of the ladies who attended the workshop on Saturday, the class, had got this book. And I loved the look of it. So I ordered it myself. And it's got um, lots of stuff on. Oops. Um, I've got my little bookmark in there different crochet stitches obviously I can't show you too much but they, they, all the stuff is in the public domain anyway now this is um, new but then at the back they've got some projects and that was a very quick flick wasn't it um, I'm trying to show you the picture without the actual pattern so some projects as well so it's got stitch patterns and techniques um, and actual project patterns as well so I love that and then I also got this which was a lot thinner than I expected so it's Tunisian crochet stitch library but you know it doesn't need to be any bigger it's got one how many has it got 100 no 50 50 different stitch patterns there um, and uh, some pictures and some charts as well um, again these aren't 
created, these are in the public domain, but charts of how to represent the stitches, you know, normal crochet, if you're a crochet, you'll know that you can, um, you have diagrams which um, of the stitches, and in knitting you have charts if you're doing intarsia or um, stranded knitting or, or lace or whatever. But this is a combination of the two, so it's, um, it's a, a sort of chart for tunity and crochet stitches, so it's quite interesting. I haven't seen that anywhere else. So these are good ideas for me to put into my Tunisian wingspan. Um, so I'm going to try a few of those. So those are just fabulous, so exciting. So that's all my something news. Quite a lot really. Right, I was going to talk about courses, but I think I've already done that. So I've done the three courses, the free form, the Tunisian and the stash busting. Um, and then we're going to take a pause for a little while before I do any more. Um, so, knit group. The Bird of Fire knit along is still going. As far as I'm aware, I'm the only person who's finished yet. So um, if you want to um, start the Bird of Fire by Sarah Wilcox, um, there is a thread on the uh, Ravelry group all about that so you can go along have a look and get started it's a lovely pattern you can also have a look at my projects and see my completed one um, I wanted to do the giveaway this week really wanted to do it because I bought this wonderful skein of yarn and you know after I put the video up last week the subscribers were climbing and climbing got to 99 and they stayed there for 10 days and I wanted to get to 100 to give it away I was tempted to subscribe myself actually, but I thought that's a bit silly. So I'm sure by next time we'll have 100 subscribers and then I'll give, do the giveaway next time. Um, right, anything else? No, I think we're done. So um, that's it for me. I will see you in two weeks time in the interim. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, um, uh, subscribe. One more subscriber and we will do the giveaway next. Um, next time, next fortnight. Um, yeah, pop along to Ravelry and uh, join the group and have a look at some of the chats. Um, and that's it, really. Oh, come find me on Instagram as well. Um, happy crafting, and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.